Hi all. At this point, you've had a chance to write your own interpretation of this photo, to read it, as our text um, calls it. Now that you've had a chance to do that, I want to call your attention to certain things in it, to suggest ways of looking at this particular picture, or to suggest ways of reading this particular picture. One thing you should get accustomed to is that there's not going to be a, necessarily a right answer. What we're looking for are observations and ways of making sense of this. One way of making sense of any photograph is to divide it into thirds so that we can see where we might want to focus our attention. And I'm going to do that using a photo editor here. And I'm not going to be able to get exactly thirds. But once we do this, you can start to notice certain things. Um, if you notice, the, the corners up here particularly, there's just not much going on. It's not a place where our attention is drawn. Similarly, the bottom third of the photograph is really just wood. So what this leaves us with is that the main areas of interest in this photograph are really this middle third along with this top third right here. It's a little bit going on on the outer edges in the middle. Um, so when we look at this picture of a baptismal font, probably these are the areas that we're really going to want to focus on. We can also say a few things about this photograph, and I'm going to open up a, um, a better picture of it at this point, a little bit larger, and keeping in mind that our main area of interest is the bowl here on top of the pedestal. This is in fact the baptismal font in a church. Um, we're called, that's called to our attention. What's interesting though is that this is also titled self-portrait. So we're going to have to think about the, the way in which the title relates to the photograph itself. If we were to describe this photo, I would expect that you would call attention to the, is this an octagon? It looks to be an octagon, that is the pedestal. But I would imagine that most of your description is going to focus on this bowl and the water within it and the way in which everything is both reflected and distorted by this. Um, that seems to be a key idea that the photographer is trying to get across. You can see colors here coming from somewhere, most likely given the shape of the bowl reflected from over here, so the light is important. We get the same thing here. We've got light coming in that is being captured on the edges of the bowl. Windows, most likely. Um, there are lights back here as well, and again, given the shape of the bowl, we know that, that light source must be coming from above, but also from the opposite side of the bowl. Um, and we can continue thinking about the way in which the light and the water both reflect and distort. What I really want to call your attention to, if we zoom in a little bit, and this is one of the benefits of um, having this in a digital format, you maybe can start to see some of the, the things that are in here. In particular, um, and I, I can point this out because I know the church in which this was taken, what you can see is that these are in fact stained glass windows that are being reflected. Um, and what we see here, it's not entirely clear from the picture and it's not intended to be, but this is part of the organ, and what you see here is a face, upside down because it is a reflection, but it is nevertheless the face of the person who took the photograph, hence self-portrait. Now we get into the question of why. How do we make sense of this? We've described it, we've broken it up into its component thirds to think about how this is framed. We've commented on, sort of, I'll call this out directly, the background for this is blurred, or at least it is set on something that is entirely nondescript. It's just red. Um, so the question is, is, how do we make sense of this? Why might the photographer have chosen to do a self-portrait in this particular way? Um, and I think one answer to this is that this is a baptismal font. If you think about what baptism does in the Christian tradition, it changes the person in some fundamental way or marks some kind of an interesting change. Um, some people describe it as being dying to an old life and rising to a new. Um, 
Another way of thinking about this is to say that the person who is being baptized in baptism is both represented but also changed or distorted a little bit in the same way that the, the images in this font are there. We can figure out what they are, but the font changes them. The bowl and the water makes them appear different to us, which is an awful lot of what baptism does in the Christian tradition. So you can see that this is more than just a picture of a bowl with water in it. There is more going on to it in it, and we can start looking at the component pieces of it and asking why might the person have done it this way. That's just one way of reading this particular photograph. There are others, and I look forward to discussing with you in class what it is that you've all had to say about this particular picture.